Hey, what's up? It's Steve. Hope you're doing awesome. This is how to build a parts caster for dummies, led by me, a dummy. I had never built a parts caster before, and I decided to go for it, and it worked out great. It was this one right here, this vintage blonde Telecaster that I'll talk through uh, completely. I'm going to take off the white pick guard just to sort of show you what I did, and then I'm going to go over, in my opinion, as a new... Um, New person to building parts casters, the parts, the tools, um, you know, some options that you've got to make it successful. So let's hop right in. Um, so this Telecaster, uh, I'll quickly tell you, uh, the body is from MJT. They are awesome. MJTAgeFinishes.com. I bought it. I won it on eBay. Maybe I ought to make another video on how to win an auction on eBay because uh, I've won a couple different guitar bodies from them, sneaking it away from somebody at the last minute. Sorry about that. So it's a vintage blonde body. It's pine. It's 3.4 ounces, uh, I think, in that range, and it's really great. Um, and um, uh, it's cut to vintage Fender specs, and therefore the neck that I got was from a Fender Road Worn uh, Telecaster, the limited edition purple 50s. It had a more modern C-shape kind of neck. The neck fit right in there perfectly, so it was great to go. I bought a different pick guard, a white one, just to make it pop because the, the one that came from uh, Fender was a bit um, yellowed. Um, I got a different ashtray bridge uh, right here uh, to accommodate a Bigsby. You can see that uh, it doesn't have the back plate right there. Um, this is from the Fender Road Worn, as are the strap pegs. And then what really gives this guitar, you know, some special juice are these two pickups. They're from Lindy Fralin, Lindy Fralin pickups. Uh, I I think they're amazing. I did a shootout on my channel of a comparison of the Lindy Fralin stock pickups uh, that are here versus the Blues Special. They're both awesome and they're really, you know, probably the best pickups I've ever had. Uh, so you can see here, you know, some genuine Fender parts, a new body, Nitro Lacquer, by the way, age finished by MJT, just, you know, killer, sort of beat up, but um, just enough to where if I give it another nick or scrape, I'm not going to worry about it, but it's not, you know, one of those super heavy relics, you know, and so that was how I got into it. I didn't uh, start fully uh, from scratch with everything, but it, it was helpful. Now, what I could have done also is uh, use a neck like this. This is a brand new neck from Musicraft. Uh, if you haven't, check out Musicraft. I'll hold the logo up right there. Um, they're killer. This is, again, a licensed Fender neck. So if you hold it up, you know, right to a Stratocaster, it's like the same exact uh, dimensions and all that. And what's cool is I was able to custom order this from them. Um, I wanted more of a vintage -y kind of look, but a modern feel. So this is a pretty thin modern C-shaped neck, 9.5 radius fingerboard as compared to the 7.25s on these, uh, medium jumbo frets. And um, I don't have them fully um, screwed in yet, but I had it wired for, uh, or uh, drilled for these more modern uh, Fender locking tuners. But this one's great. Now it came in natural, you see that natural finish right there. Um, Musicraft, uh, by the way, built in the USA and licensed by Fender. That's what it was like, but they sent it straight to MJT and I had MJT give it a nitro lacquer finish. So this is fully nitro lacquer. It's gonna wear nicely and beat up nicely, but um, it's really killer, killer neck. So um, that's a great option too. Instead of going to the trouble of buying uh, maybe a more expensive fender neck um, or, um, or buying a whole body and having to take it apart, you know, like I did, which was, you know, I, I just wanted to do that. Uh, this is another great option. So check out Musicraft, um, great neck, and I got a video on them. So let me put that right there carefully. So uh, let me talk to you about some tools that you'll need. Um, probably need some string cutters, wire cutters, needle nose pliers just to grab stuff. Um, I bought a cheap soldering iron and soldering is my worst um, capability, but this is probably like a $15 set, I think, or maybe I bought this for a couple bucks and this for 10 or 15 bucks. It's a 30 watt soldering iron with this little stand right there. Um, I'm no pro at soldering at all, but I learned just enough and it has just enough heat, you know, to where just you put it right on the solder of a existing wire and just give it a little pull. Typically it pops right off. I'm not gonna go into how to solder, um, but I didn't get anything big and fancy and expensive. Um, I got some blue painter's tape that I used um, um, 
to get some uh, like my pick guard and some other things in place so for example I took a took a piece of blue painters tape and before I had um, screwed on or drilled holes this body came with no holes in it whatsoever um, and that was one of my big nervousnesses uh, things I was nervous about was drilling holes into a new body I was like man if I make a mistake is there any going back um, I got over that fear so for example when I lined up this pick guard right in the right place which I'll explain in a minute um, I used this blue painters tape I had like you know eight pieces so this wasn't going anywhere I drilled some pilot holes straight down in one two three four five and it worked out great and the great thing about blue painters tape is you rip it off especially on nitro lacquer I'm not concerned about anything but it comes right off um, so that's little uh, little blue painters tape um, one thing you can do is get um, I if you have a strat I, I encourage you to get a preloaded pick guard this is actually a, a Ventera pick guard right off a brand new Ventera strat this one um, but what you could also do is um, go buy one from another source this right here is a Lindy Fralin um, loaded pick guard and I was able to pick out the specific pickups three different style pickups I wanted to some wiring options and all that um, mint green three ply instead of a single ply uh, white and it's great super top-notch made in the USA so um, you know you could buy a body a loaded pick guard if you're if it's a strat the great thing about a loaded pick guard if it's a strat it's like they did all the work for you you just you know, literally you set this in the guitar and you solder three little wires and you're good to go for the telly um, I just got the pickups from Lindy Fralin but they were easy to like you know easy to connect to that control jack the telly's just different so let me set that down without totally slamming anything um, all right a couple more parts two different size screwdrivers I don't know what size that is and I mean it says a number one um, you know I would just say when you're taking off screws um, from something I usually try to go straight down I use my finger here to make sure you know it doesn't fly off I'm constantly sort of putting downward pressure like that not, I'm not shoving it you know incredibly hard because I don't want to like damage anything but if you don't put enough pressure you know the screwdriver could fly off and scrape the top of the guitar and especially on a poly or a brand new finish you get this big ugly scratch you don't want that so you know I mean I'm sort of constantly pushing it down like that um, I'll take off this uh, pick guard here one of the things uh, I learned I'm going really fast one of the things I learned that I think is really helpful to a lot of people um, or that was helpful to me is somebody said when you take off all the parts from a guitar when you're breaking down a guitar or taking anything off I mean unless you have a lot of space and you're really careful um, use some bags uh, like this um, and a sharpie now it's a bit geeky but um, this says pig guard and jack plate so these are five screws from this guitar it's not from this guitar um, here's another one uh, back plate screws so these are some back plate screws for this Stratocaster so get some little bags like that and a sharpie and label everything because you don't think you'll need to and then you find out that you bump the table or you know you stand up and if you got a towel or something like I got right here all you know next thing you know all the screws you've got blend blended together and you'd be surprised some are not some look really close we can tell they're different like, ah, which ones go with pickguard which which ones go with whatever so I got five right here from this white pickguard for now I don't have any other screws on the table so I'm not gonna do that because I'm gonna put it right back on so I've got my five right there um, in fact I'm gonna heed my own I'm gonna heed my own warning I'm gonna put these five right in there let's go ahead and label it Again, it's a bit nerdy. I'm gonna say Tele Pick Guard. Okay, it's a bit nerdy, but I've I've gotten them mixed up before. It's a bit of a nightmare. So let me plop this off. This was about a ten dollar pick guard from All Parts, right there. Um, and now you can see right here, I got my stock Tele pickup um, pickups from um, Lindy Fralin but check out this I put copper um, some copper tape inside there for shielding 
to shield it. So I bought this off Amazon or wherever for 10 bucks maybe. You gotta be careful with it because it's metal. It sort of looks like it is tape, but it'll cut you if you're not careful. But basically, you know, you just peel some off and I coated the inside of this thing all throughout that body cavity right there. And it keeps it from, you know, hum and any buzz. By the way, these pickups are really quiet anyway, like dead quiet, and as long as I didn't have a laptop or something else plugged in. But the shielding is great. So I just kept working it, working it, and I did just enough to fully cover it. But once I put, um, you know, the bridge on, I didn't want any to be hanging out over there. So um, that is something I recommend. As far as the drill, um, uh, here's what I did with the drill. Uh, this is an old drill from the 60s, probably. My wife's um, dad, my, my father-in-law, but he passed away when she was little. Um, this is a Sears Craftsman. Still works great, um, so I've never gotten a fancy one. Again, I'm not a tool guy, I'm not a, a builder, but I did buy a new set of, uh, of drill bits. And this is just a couple bucks at Home Depot or whatever. Let me see if I can open it up. And I think all I ended up using was maybe the three and thirty seconds one. I'm not sure, um, but to, to drill these little holes, probably even smaller than that. Um, you know, that's one of the scariest parts. I'm not going to try to duplicate it again. But you know, once I got my drill bit um, in, you know, I, it's like again, I had this thing um, on here taped in, and I just did a l careful, careful. Um, straight down, downward pressure, not too deep, and I used a small drill bit, sort of like a, a haircut. You don't want to go too big because you can't, um, you know, refill the wood. So I did a very small, I went smaller, I used a drill bit that was smaller than the screws that I was going to put in there. Um, sort of the uh, width of the shaft, but not the threading. So I'm not going to go deep into that, but it, it worked out great. Uh, also. You know, so I, I drilled a hole right there. I drilled a hole right there. Um, oh, by the way, now that I turned it over, for these uh, ferrules, I think, um, I bought a pack off Amazon uh, or wherever. Again, I can't, can't remember. About 10 bucks, and um, I just sort of pounded them right in. It was great. I didn't take them out of the purple Telecaster that I had because it was going to be too much work. Um, and, I mean, to get, they were sort of stuck in there and wedged in there. And I was also worried about, you know, just shredding the wood or something like that. So it wasn't worth it. Um, last thing I'll say real quickly is if you've ever had one of these road worn guitars or somebody else's that just got, you know, really shredded on the back, you know, um, Fender, the new road worns, um, they, you know, intentionally sand them and make them uh, worn looking. This one happens to be pretty nice and satiny smooth. But this one here was a little too rough for my taste. And I wanted to make it smoother. I didn't want gloss, but I didn't want it to feel like bare wood. Um, I went on to TDPRI uh, Telecaster forum and I posted some questions. And a great guy, a friend of mine, his uh, name there is Mr. Bad Example. I think it's M R B D um, E X P L. Anyway, Mr. Bad Example. He, um, he gave me some advice, which was, and some other people said this, but he really walked me through it and sent me some pictures and was a mega help, so thank you. Um, get some true oil. This is Birchwood True Oil. It's gun stock finish, so you know people that have um, some wooden guns um, and want to refinish you know, the handles and all that. So I didn't do any, I had a road-worn neck, didn't do anything to it at all, like as far as cleaning it or prepping it or whatever. Um, and I cut up a white, t-shirt of mine into these little squares, just dipped a little true oil in there, rubbed just a little bit right there. I didn't go up there, I didn't go up there. And I just, you know, rubbed it pretty lightly, did one, you know, made sure I got enough to where I could sort of see that I got it all wet. And then I took, I sort of let it dry for a second, took another little square of that cloth and just sort of just rubbed the heck out of it and rubbed it in, waited six hours, did it again. I think I did five or six coats. So it was just a little coat, wait a couple minutes, just buff it out. And it got this nice gloss right here, um, or a nice finish. It was a little tacky and a little sticky. And so then I got some steel wool and um, I did a pretty good press down 
and it, it, it after that fifth or sixth coat, um, it got pretty nice. It was a little still sticky. I waited a day, sanded it down a little bit more with the steel wool, and it's just silky smooth. So it's not, it may look a little glossy, but it feels just like this, and it blended in great. It didn't have any trouble. Um, you know, it, it looks like like exactly what I wanted. Like maybe Fender had done it well and right, has that look, but the whole thing feels nice and smooth and silky. So that's a look at how to build a parts caster. Um, I recommend if you're on the fence and you've got the means, you know, to get the parts, um, just do it. Um, don't fear. I was so worried about drilling and, you know, when I connected the neck to the body, as long as you get Fender licensed parts, like this Musicraft, or like this MJT, um, it worked out great. I mean, right when I strung it up, intonation um, was great, string height was great. You know, might need a little setup. Um, could, some, you know, some of them need a lot of setup. But the point is for me, I didn't put it on there and go, oh my gosh, it's out of tune or weird. Um, it worked out great. And um, I'd say if you're on the fence, just give it a shot and go for it. So anyway, um, this isn't a sponsored video, but um, you know, thanks to the guys at MJT, um, I, I bought the body, but they've sent me some other stuff from time to time. Um, they did the finishing on this Musicraft neck for free, which is really great of them. Um, so thanks MJT, uh, Musicraft. Um, again, they, they didn't pay me, but they sent me this neck just to sort of check out and try. And uh, it's going to be great. And it's beautiful. Well done. Killer wood grain, but right to my specs. And their ordering process is really, really fun on the website. You can sort of you know, build your own and, and they get cranking on it. A uh, great wood grain too, like none of it's, none of it's like weird or splotchy. I don't know, like it's just a good, good looking piece of wood right there. Um, and then uh, Lindy Fralin for the pickups, for this loaded pick guard right here for that Strat and uh, these killer sock telly pickups. So uh, it's a lot of fun and I've never really been much of a builder or tinker, but once you get going, you realize it isn't that, it's not that hard. It's not rocket science. Just take your time, be patient, plan ahead, um, you know, get some basic tools, but you won't need, you know, the world's best to have some success as I've shown. So anyway, I hope this is helpful. Thanks for watching and catch you next time. See you.